and yes, every oh my god, too many people are being brought in. Good evening, hi, good evening, and welcome. Um, let's bring out the full-on webcam so I can show you what we are consuming tonight. This is the blue brew free or die IPA with blood orange, and of course it has, um, yeah, it has Abe Lincoln jumping out of Mount Rushmore. You see he's got his hand up there. He's bringing his left hook out, ready to knock down Mecha Stalin, right? You get giant Abe Lincoln, and he is going to be in a giant Godzilla-style battle against Mecha Stalin. I hear that he might also recruit the Statue of Liberty. Anyway, good evening. So today, I was talking about about small rockets, Right? I had a Kerbal Space Program video. Well, actually, no, I had a real world space program video. And it was all like, how small can you make rockets? So I was like, you know, let's let's actually let's actually do that. So I'm gonna start using realism overhaul and I'm looking for the smallest probe. And we have the Explorer 1 probe, so that seems like a good place to start. So we'll stick it at the top of the thing, right? How how do those small rockets compare to the SpaceX Falcon 1? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. There's an interesting story about the Falcon 1 that I heard that um, supposedly, you know, uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Elon, Musk, Elon Musk, he kind of got sold this story. Hold on. 1859 versus uh, 1859. They're both exactly the same performance. Which one looks nicer? I kind of like this one a bit. I think that one looks nicer. Yeah, totally going to... Oh gonna do that yeah 2045 so i'm gonna put a little baby sergeant rocket on there because it's super light and ever there's no avionics what i think i'm gonna do is i'm gonna spin stabilize this upper stage this is my cunning plan right the falcon one no so anyway i think everyone so falcon one was basically a single engine version of the falcon then there was going to be the falcon 5 and the falcon 9 and they basically said screw that let's just do the falcon 9 there was some suggestion that Elon Musk fell into the trap of believing that there was a market for small to medium size, uh, you know, satellites, and was basically caught out by there not being a market. So this is a second stage reason. Okay, no, looking for like second stage engines. See, these have kind of crap performance, but this. Hold on. I'm looking at the specific impulse. This has a pretty good performance. However, let me just see. Dry mass versus wet mass. Can I see that? Tolerance 100 Gs. <laughs> Let's just see this. Mass dry, 9.4 kilograms. Yeah, that's like 1% off it. So, I think... He didn't create PayPal. He was one of the founders. I mean, he did help create it, but he wasn't the only guy that created PayPal. Let's be clear on that. Uh, Elon did a lot of things, but he wasn't the only one. Have I heard of the Hyperloop? Loop? Of course I've heard of the Hyperloop. What do you take me for? Some kind of person that would not have heard of the Hyperloop? So what would be the next step for the SpaceX mission? Um, I... We don't know. Go to Mars, probably. Which, uh, it's of interesting that this week certain comments were made by uh, Elon, which pretty much rule out Red Dragon. Because, I mean, his basically statement was, well, we've figured out how to do this better now, so why would we do that?
did the Japanese design this rocket to take out of Godzilla? No, they designed the rocket to be as small as possible. Why would you design a small rocket if you were attacking Godzilla? You would want the biggest rocket. You know, if you were the Japanese fighting off Godzilla, you would go to the Soviets and say, hey, give me that N1. I hear it's pretty good at exploding. That's a terrible thing to say, but it is true. Okay, let's try this and go. Okay. Accelerating at about 5G, so we're getting ready up to Mark 1. And somewhere along the line, okay, there has been a mistake. Uh, revert flight, revert. I forgot to change my, um, the burn rate. I thought I changed the burn rate on one of those things, but clearly I did not. It's like watching the rocket escape system for five space... <laughs> There wasn't a rocket escape system for the space shuttle. That was the problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's gonna come... That's falling over too fast. Revert flight. Galileo! 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 Galileo Figaro! Magnifico! Oh, oh, oh. I'm just a poor boy from a poor family. He's just a poor boy from a poor family. Spare him his life on the monstrosity. Sorry, I did. was trying to make it sound more glorious in stereo. This thing is going to totally explode, but I like the idea. Oh, I should have actually had those on separate stages. Yeah! Should we, should we let this thing fail? Let's see how far this thing goes before it fails. Because, you know, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like... Okay, finally it fell apart. What about using air augmented engines? You mean using a fighter? Possible? It's possible, but... Uh, right now I have almost zero control of this rocket right now. Whoa, what? <laughs> okay! Yeah, this could actually use some passive stability in the form of fins. Because this is not steep enough, this trajectory, either. Yeah, it's not stable in that mode. Okay, revert flight. When this thing stops, that's when we fire the next stage. And hopefully it can hold attitude. Maybe I'll just do this. Ready? And four, three, two, one... Okay, and why is it turning? Why is it turning that way? Oh, okay. no, no ignitions remaining. Why did that spin? That's so unfair. Oh, why? Can someone give me an idea of why this ignition document of, is of note? It is a book written by a guy that knows a lot about rocket fuel development and it is hilarious. It is the, one of the most quotable books in chemistry ever. I'm just gonna leave those buttons untouched. Oh, 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 oh. How are we doing into oh yeah we're gonna be able to do this just fine okay so then we can use the translation to go forwards and then just as we get close to our target position 30 seconds okay so that's actually getting pretty close what I'm gonna do is point this at the horizon spin it up right so what we're gonna do is spin this thing up so that it becomes self-stabilized that's the idea and then when I fire the engines the whole thing should remain roughly stable see I don't need any guidance in that upper stage it just needs the Delta V okay, that's one stage Second stage. Whoa, look at the speed of this thing. And remember, it's got two kilometers per second in that last burn. Okay. 
Okay, five and a half. I, this might just be a little short. Ah! Oh, oh, it's so close. Yeah, look, fins. <laughs> Let's just watch this one. That's why you don't have fins there, right? Uh -huh. Okay, and that, and go. watch these things. Do they fall or do they crash? I, I, don't, I think we will move out of range before they hit the surface. But it is rather beautiful and elegant to watch. I, I think I was right to move over to these little... Uh... Oh, there. Yeah, they did end up landing. Was I over 2.6 tons? Yes, the Spanish Armada over Mars. Don't you remember that sequence in history where the Spaniards invaded Mars and the, you know, with the Armada and, you know, Francis Drake and friends had to go there and save Mars. Get ready to initiate this second stage. Three, two, one. Okay. Okay. This is looking better because my Apple Apps is rising. If I can get it above 150, I think this is going to work. Excellent. Okay, using my Cavia B. Yes, let's lift that Apple Apps up higher. Stability control, stability assist. And now bring the nose down here. Spin. Uh oh, and fire. Seven, five, six, nine. Oh, man! So basically, my semi major axis is basically almost exactly the surface of the Earth. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm failed. I failed one more time. And after a night's sleep, I came back and I decided to switch back to liquid engines for my first stage. See, the problem with liquid engines is that even the lightest ones available to me that work as booster engines uh, are just incredibly high thrust. This thing's accelerating at 6, 7 Gs. This is, of course, Solomon Epstein killing G-forces, but more importantly, it is accelerating me through the lower uh, atmosphere at a very inefficient rate, and it is causing serious heating. Uh, I mean, they're more efficient than those solid rocket boosters, but I could, I could tweak those things, I could adjust the throttle, I could make the staging work, so I wasn't pushing the limit and ultimately destroying these things. So that meant splitting the two liquid fuel stages and uh, coming over to a new version of the design. So the first Vanguard stage gets shortened significantly, it's only giving me about two and a half kilometers per second on the one, well, in theory. Uh, but it will burn out in the lower atmosphere before my spacecraft catches fire and explodes. And then there is a second stage using the one kilonewton thrusters. Now that's not a real thruster. Everything else in this is modeled after a real object in the space program. Whereas the one kilonewton is kind of a generic spacecraft engine that you find on many, many spacecraft. Look, you know, nondescript space probe engine, I think is the best way to describe that. Anyway, we have a fin stabilized second stage, which is using aerosine and nitrogen tetroxide. And it uses little, it uses three of those little one kilonewton boosters. Boosters. They're not boosters. God, who would use that as a booster, an ant? And, well, the engines are just enough to carry my velocity up ever so slowly. Now, the mass in the uh, vehicle assembly building is 2.569 tons. And I, I think I actually have room to trim this thing a whole lot. Um... So yeah, we also that because we're using aerosine nitrogen tetroxide, that is that means we can also use that to feed the attitude control system. Although we basically can't fly this thing with stability control on because the thing is far too aggressive and it just ends up burning tons and tons of fuel. 
But we get ourselves up into it, we loft ourselves up towards our apoapse and then cut our engine when we have about 100 meters per second worth of delta V left, point our nose at the horizon and with about uh, 30 seconds to go we start spinning up their engines, fire up the thrusters one more time to pick up as much speed as we can, you know, basically burn out the rest of that fuel, and 23 seconds to go, fire the first stage, starting to some velocity. Oh yes, I can feel this one is going to be... this one is going to be brilliant. So yes, uh, lower mass than the SS-520 rocket that the uh, Japanese are supposedly using, although they are using solid rocket boosters. However, I'm going to point out that many of the solid rock... The, many of the engine techs on this thing are actually from the 1950s, so... Uh, <laughs> I think you could certainly get a lot smaller using modern rocket technology. Okay, we're up to, we're going to get over 6 kilometers per second with this, and that means the last 2 kilometers per second should put us at like 8.3 kilometers per second, which should easily place us into orbit. Bingo, not just into orbit, into quite an eccentric orbit. 3,000 kilometers above the surface. Okay, I've done it. I think I can make this even better, and perhaps if I look at some more modern rocket technology, I can do even better still. But until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.